Today, I wanted to check in with a top endgame player that I've been friends with for some time because he knows firsthand how to get himself to the top of the leaderboard in every piece of content in this game. Hi everyone, my name is Bravo and if you guys haven't seen me around in Knockout or Boigua, I'm also that one random guy who got number one in the anomaly mode and people probably know me as that one guy who was playing tank and bruiser in point war and in rta as well okay he's being too humble here listen he's made not one but several multi top 10 finish in knockout rta and even the pve leaderboards and that's because he's figured out how to stay ahead of the competition possibly during my podcast with bravo i asked him what it takes to stay ahead of the competition and his answer was so simple it's almost genius Alrighty then. And we're going to leave that to the end of the video because there's a whole bunch of stuff that we need to cover first. The whole reason I wanted to talk to Bravo today was because he has managed to solidify himself as one of the best players in the game. And so, I asked him what were the key factors that made that possible. I think my first team when I, the first team when I first used in Point War was something along the line of like Clara, Gabriel, Rancy, Sally, Donna. Like, it was my first team and it kind of like defined the play style that I want to play, which is just like going to be tank and bruiser. And because I also have experience from um, other RPG game like Pokemon and um, King's Rake Pokemon, uh, I also have some experience in uh, tactics game. I kind of know that uh, what kind of play style I want to play. And I try to put it into my theory, into tests, and it works. So this, so I think that um, it turned out that this like did a fairly good job in accommodating the bruiser play style that I love, and I just stick to it, and it turns out well. And just like that, Bravo did something right. Something I see over and over again when I play against the top players and when I talk to them is that they all have the same kind of thing in common. What's that word for it? adaptability because most top players are just really well to the meta and not afraid to try different strategies because since the game has a really big amount of esper you can choose from you are free to experiment with any combination and since the and even the gears are really diverse so you can like just play around as long as you know what you're doing adaptability that's the word i'm looking for and listen that's going to be the first success factor for you you could be afraid to try things out just because you don't want to look stupid. And listen, there's no shame in that. But for Bravo, like most other successful top ranking players, it started with adaptability and not being afraid to try new things. Well, here's how he puts it. And make sure you do a lot of like practice in Point Wa or in like RTA against friends and others just because practice makes perfect. And uh, don't be afraid to be creative or different from others. I wouldn't be like I am right now if I am just having a one-track mind of speak, uh, speak, cliff or nothing ideology, which I know a lot of players were sadly still having that mindset. But yeah, just break away from it and you will have a lot of fun just trying to mess around and see what works. Of course, Bravo's eye is to be competitive, and I'm sure a lot of people aspire to get there. But here's the second thing that sets Bravo apart from the rest. I didn't find out about Bravo just because, you know, we were in the same group, although that helped. But not really. I only really started noticing Bravo when he started helping out a lot of other players improving the game. And that's because he's setting a good example at being a top player. So I asked him, what sets the top players apart from the rest? Like, what qualities do you think they, it's essential to, you know, succeed in a game like this? just to make sure you don't be an ass to other people, just to earn their respect. And that would make you stand out in a better position than normal players. A lot of players don't quite fully appreciate the amount of effort that goes into the pre-planning process in gearing our aspers, especially when it comes to PvP. In the higher echelons of most PvP content, be it Knockout or RTA, nothing happens by chance. When Gabriel drafts an Esper into you, you best believe that there has been some thought process behind it. When I don't draft Shimmers during casual matches, or don't draft Mirror Espers to you, I've already thought it through and I'm trying to prove a point that you don't need Shimmers to win. Similarly, when Bravo strictly drafts tanks into you, he's already gone through many many hours of stress testing his ideas before he publicly uses it. Yeah, not to mention that the gear sometimes that you get, even the 
even if the speed roll is high the substat also make a it's also like a make a break for me too and for me when i build an esper i'm really particular on the substat as well so if so even if the for example if like uh let's say we have like clara who definitely needs some speed and stuff but if my if the gears roll into like attack or accuracy i would be shut away from using that and just up for like a slower piece just so that she can have like the ideal like distribution of stat that is actually useful for her i'm just being picky with like stack gearing and not having many luck in speed rolls and this was where i asked the big question what kind of advice would you give someone you know who just wants you know improve their skills mm. um my advice would be um listening to other players is good but always trust your own instinct you have to know what you're doing basically like you can't just like throw random gears into random what? character and just throw into and just try and go into the match and then you're losing you're like what do you learn basically nothing basically brush past brush past that esper and then never visit them again it's like it's not a fair test to be honest honestly it's great advice and i couldn't have put it better What's interesting about Bravo's playstyle is that I've already covered how the tank playstyle works. And this is how a tank playstyle usually plays in draft that in this case, really beats the odds even if we are in the speed meta.